Okay, Chris. Now, when it comes to the forever transfer rip, one of the main reasons that a client would want to purchase this rip is the rip's ability to do what we call rasterization. Now, some people out there who aren't using the transfer rip, whenever you print a full fill graphic, it feels very heavy, but those full fill graphics also have a tendency to crack easier. And what we try to explain to people is that by using rasterization or in a way distressing, you are going to get better output as far as durability is concerned. Now, it's difficult for me to explain the concept of rasterization. I was kind of hoping you could tackle that one for me. Sure, quite easy. The rasterization is also called half toning. When you are a screen printer, you understand half toning. So what you do is breaking up the image in smaller points or smaller dots. So for example, when we're looking at this t-shirt over here, this here looks pretty solid, doesn't it? It does, from a distance. And normally, you're looking at a distance on a t-shirt about three feet, four feet, not closer. Mm -hmm. Because when you get closer, you usually take off the t-shirt without this person. <laughs> so this t-shirt here has a very, very soft hand. And it's got broken up with the transfer rip into different raster points. We're going to show this into the camera a little bit closer. So what it does, it breaks there are two ways you can achieve rasterization. The first way is just putting little punch holes or little dots or little lines into your graphic. But doing this just randomly doesn't lead to a good result. So the, what the RIP also does is it's recognizing t-shirt colors. You can do it with black t-shirts and with white t-shirts, which are the mostly common printed shirts. Mm -hmm. And replacing colors gradually by shirt color. Quite obviously here on that printout. This printout here was done without the transfer rip. And we do have here a black background. It feels pretty heavy. It's not breathable. Yeah, in other words, it doesn't have that self-weeding capability. It's almost like using a solid piece of film to create the design. Yes, exactly. So this here was a JPEG file. OK. Pixelated graphic. And this, as mentioned beforehand, JPEG files don't have a transparent layer. In this example, we have a photography, which is quite popular on the market. A lot of people would like to have somebody's face on a shirt. Mm -hmm. So what we did over here, we replaced also colors by shirt color. We have here a lot of black areas on a black shirt, so it doesn't make any sense to print those. That's true. So when we turn this around, we see the same image rasterized. So what you can see, obviously, there is no border anymore. Mm -hmm. But we didn't remove only the border. When we look here at the eyes of David Beckham or at the beard, it's not black toner printed. There's just nothing printed and gradually faded out. The darker something is in the image, the more it gets replaced by toner color. Another example would be on my Marvel shirt over here. Let's just see what it is. So this here shows us more about the capabilities of the transfer rip. So in this case, we have a line raster. OK. And we have different colors, not only black and white. So the RIP, what it does, it recognizes shirt colors and, and uh, print colors. And knows we're printing here on a black t-shirt. Black parts of the image, like here above Wolverine, are skipped completely. Here behind Galactus, the space in between is skipped completely. Also, Deadpool's eye or Spider-Man's dark blue suit. We've printed just a couple of dark blue tones, dark blue spots. Mm -hmm. So it looks dark blue from a distance, although most of it is black. While here on Spider-Man's eyes and over here on Iron Man's chest, we have very light parts of the image. And you don't see any dots or just very tiny dots in there. Because this is a lighter color. It doesn't make any sense to replace or punch dots in these type of colors. So the lighter the color is, the more solid it is. And the darker the color is, the more it gets replaced by the rip and replaced by shirt color. So basically what you're saying is through steps in the rip, depending on our shirt color, whether we're going on to a dark garment or a light garment, we can basically tell the rip what colors to drop out, what colors to leave intact, so that we get a good graphic, but yet not only do we get the self-weeding capability, we get the breathability, so to speak, of putting the pattern in with the rasterization. Exactly. And you don't need to be a Photoshop or Draw Pro. It works with just a couple of clicks. Oh, well, 
I'm no Photoshop pro for sure, so you're probably going to have to show me those clicks on how to do something like this. Exactly. Using the rasterization function is that simple. Let me move to the next screen by clicking the next button. So here we go to the print and screen settings option. This is already step 5 of 5. This screen combines the print settings as well as the mirror function and the number of copies, so the typical printed driver settings in just one screen. Usually your print settings are already preset, so you don't have to look out for the, for the right settings. And let's just talk about screening. With, with this screening section over here, we define our rasterization. We can open this drop-down menu and we can see different options over here. Use screening from printer means don't put any holes in there, don't put any lines in there, print it as it is. So in other words, if we select use screening from printer, it would print identically to the way the Oki driver would reproduce the graphic. Exactly, just by the reduction of the amount of white and by the improvement of colors and it chokes off the white edges. So even if we don't want to rasterize our image, we highly recommend to print out of the transfer rip just to get better colors and savings on white toner. Good point. Then those two settings over here, the recommended for bright media and use screening as configured as a mask recommend for dark media are our most popular settings. They are quite similar. Let's go screening as configured as a mask recommend for dark media. So what this does, it tells your system that we are printing here on a dark t-shirt. So it's simulating now a black t-shirt. Okay. Well, what other color would you define as a dark besides just solid black? Other colors as a, as a dark would be a navy blue, an anthracite, or dark gray, dark browns, everything that's close to black, really dark. Okay, I got you. So here we got different settings over here. We have mask, we have shadow tolerance, we have dot shapes, angles, highlights, shadows. A little bit confusing when you don't know what it is, but it's very simple. So let me just show you first the dot shape. So here we have Euclidean's rounds, squares, lines, and so on. The most popular things are Euclidean's, which is more like an X-shaped dot, and lines. Let me show you this on an example. So, Doug, the most popular functions for dot shapes are usually the Euclidean's and the lines. Doug, would you hold up the shot for me, please? Sure. So the shot that you're holding up here are Euclidean's with an irregular angle, like 52.5 in this case. The benefit of an irregular angle is that you don't see a certain pattern. Let's say we decide for a 30 degrees angle or a 45 degrees angle, we are used to see those angles in our daily life. While something irregular like 52.5, something you don't just pick up that easily and the image looks more natural to you. While a line rasterization would look like this over here. In this case, we use vertical lines. The benefits of the dot rasterization is that it looks more natural, while the line rasterization gives you a nice, cool look and also adds to the stretchability of the garment. So great for sports jerseys and everything that's a little bit of a, has a little bit of a stretch in it. Oh, okay, I get it. So basically, if we're going to put a design onto a fabric and we know that fabric is going to stretch or we know it's going to flex, we should probably go with lines over dots. Exactly. And if we want to keep the graphic intact, so to speak, but to break it up, make it more breathable, we go with dots over lines. Absolutely. Okay. So, back at our screen again over here. Let me show you what mask means. Mask gives us the frequency called in LPI, which means lights per inch. When we use the drop-down menu over here, we have values in between 10 and 40. A uh, lower number gives you less lights per inch. It means when we use the Euclidean's, it gives us now 15 dots per, per inch. When we use the setting for 40, we get 40 dots per inch. So how does this look like? Let me show you this on another graphic over here. So we do have here on our left upper side, a raster with 15 LPI. So we have big dots, but not so much dots. Then we have examples with 30 LPI, with 25 LPI. On our lower right corner, we do have 35 LPIs. We can see at the 35 LPIs, we have a better image quality. 
but we also have a little bit heavier hand. While 15 LPI gives us the softest hands of all those. So basically what you're saying is when it comes to the mask, the higher the mask number, the smaller and more compact the dot pattern will be. Exactly. So the, high, the higher and smaller compact the dot pattern is, the more heavy the hand will be, but it gives you more image quality on the other hand. So we usually recommend something in between 20 and 35 is a good overall value. What you also can do if you can't decide if you like 25 or 30, you can just type in a value of your choice, like, like 27. We'll accept this as well. And when you make these adjustments to the mask, you can preview that adjustment before you send the print job to your white toner printer. Absolutely. Down here on the lower right corner, there's a preview button next to the print button. When we click on that, it generates a preview based on that settings. But let me just explain you the other settings first before we start a preview. So here on the angle, we can decide the angle of our graphic. Like, like explained on the different t-shirts, on an Euclidean, we would recommend something irregular, like 22, like 37, like 52, because we don't catch up that pattern that quickly with our eye. We're not used to see those angles. It looks more natural. Okay. When we have lines, we would I would recommend to work with 0 or with 90. 0 goes horizontal straight down, so quite good for portraits, uh, 90 more for landscape pictures. Okay. So if we have the angle set at zero while we have the lines set as our dot shape, those lines are going to run up and down. Exactly, they're going to run up and down. And if we have the angle set at 90, the lines will run side to side. Exactly, and when we run these lines to 45, it goes diagonal through. Let me give you a preview with zero, with an angle of zero, with a mask of 27, with lines and uh, zero shadow tolerance. So we hit the preview button and it generates a preview over here. It will be already be mirrored. And as long as this bar here is running, it's calculating. It's calculating all five colors, C, M, Y, K, and white, and gives us a preview in a short moment. Important to say, when we use different mask settings, the amount of toner we use is always the same. So it doesn't matter if we use mask 10 or mask 40. So this here is now our preview. We can scroll down, and we can see our lines going straight down. We can also zoom in by using a different scale. Zoom out and zoom in. We can go really close to it. Okay, I see the lines running up and down up the print. And, exactly. And what you also can see that on the white part, on the, on the head, there are no lines. Because it doesn't make sense to replace it now. The rip calculates now with black t-shirt color. And it doesn't make any sense to replace the black and the white with black t-shirt color. So there are no lines in the white. What we can also see on the cyan over here, that the line pattern is different from the line pattern in the red, because red is a darker color, so it gets strongly replaced by the black shirt color. We can also see it as a color preview, but I always recommend to do all separations black. This gives you the advantage when you have a dark area, like over here, you know that this is a dense color. This is a, this here will feel is a solid area in your print, while this here has a very soft hand. When we close that preview, let me talk also about the shadow tolerance. The shadow tolerance, let me show you what it does over here. So the shadow tolerance determines how much of the actual image will be taken out and replaced by shirt color. So the higher the volume is in the shadow tolerance, the more of the dark colors will be replaced by short color. Okay, 
So if you use the shadow tolerance and you are using the mask feature for dark media, it's going to remove the darker colors in the design because you're telling the rip that you're printing to a dark shirt. Exactly. Now, is the opposite effect true if you use the rasterization feature for light garments? Does the shadowing feature work in reverse at that point? It does, it does, exactly. When you use the mask for bright media, it simulates a white t-shirt. So it doesn't print white at all and will print just dots or some few lines for pastel tones and dark colors like a black will be printed almost solid. Okay, so if you lower your shadow tolerance and you have the, m the masking for dark media, it's going to capture more of your dark colors then, correct? Exactly, correct. In our example over here that we see here on the screen right now, we can see a couple of dots with a shadow tolerance of zero on that particular graphic. That means that the background that we had over here was not black, it was more like a very dark gray. And the rip recognizes this very dark gray as a not black color and prints dots to imitate the dark color, the, the, the dark gray from behind, from a distance. So when we increase the shadow tolerance, it, re, uh, it automatically recognizes the dark gray or the dark blue, dark brown, also as black and takes it out. The higher we go, the more aggressively it takes out dark colors and replaces the shirt color. And you can always use a preview in the rip to see if you like the result. Now we do have two options over here that we didn't speak about is highlights and shadows. These settings are very seldom used. Most of the times you use it when you have rougher stitched garments like a PK shirt, like a polo shirt or tote bags. So something that doesn't necessarily have a tight weave. Exactly. Because in theoretically in the software we can do our, create our dots infinitively small. But when our dots become too small and the garment is not tight weaved, it might hit, the dot might hit the gap in between the, the stitches. So it wouldn't, wouldn't transfer because there's no contact to the fabric. So what the highlights and shadow tolerance, the highlights and the shadows does is when you increase the highlights, it takes all the light small dots and creates one big dot out of it. And when you increase or decrease the shadow value, it speaks to the darker dots and takes all the dark dots together, the, all sm the fine small dark dots and creates one bigger dot. So you don't lose that dots anymore. Okay. Normally something in between 100 and 95 are good values for the shadows and something in between 0 and 10 are normal values for the highlights. And again, we can make these changes and use our preview to preview the changes that we made to make sure it's the layout we want before we load in our AFOIL film and start printing our transfers. Exactly. What we also can do is instead of printing on the AFOIL film, maybe print it in a black piece of cardboard or black piece of copy paper just to simulate the print on something dark. Yes, I have often recommended for people who have white toner printers to go out and purchase colored paper so that way they can see their designs on a color sheet that's a representation of their fabric color before they load in their A-foil, just to make sure they aren't making a mistake. Exactly. We have one more feature over here in that screening setting, is the micro mask. As you can see, when we use the micro mask, the shadow tolerance drops out. All the other settings are more or less the same, but we got a new setting over here, the micro mask percentage. Let's say we have a garment that's neither dark, neither light, like a red t-shirt or a green t-shirt, something that of these intermediate colors that you can't define as a dark color or a light color. Okay. When we replace blacks by shirt color and we use a red t-shirt, it just would look strange. It wouldn't look natural. So what we can do, we can use the micro mask and decide here of how much of the image will be replaced by, in that case, lines. We can have values in between 50%, so half the image will be replaced by lines, and 2%, so we rarely put a couple of dots in there. Let's give you a preview with about 14% and start another preview. So this here will also give you a very soft hand and you 
will lose not too much image quality compared to a full page print. Okay, so basically by using the micro mask, it's a way that we can keep most, if not all, of the graphic intent. Because when we select a mask for dark media, it's going to naturally want to remove some of those darker colors. If we select a mask for light media, it's going to naturally want to remove some of those lighter colors. So by selecting the micro mask, we should be able to keep most of our color range within the design intact? Yeah, we keep all the color range intact to be specific. And we treat every color the same way. Let me just move down here to the preview. So the white hat has lines. The sunglasses in red and in blue have the same amount, the same thickness of lines. So every color is treated the same way. So we didn't lose any color. We just made a couple of lines or a couple of dots inside whatever we decide for. Okay. So basically, it's a way that we can essentially break up the entire graphic. Exactly. We're going to close the preview. When we are happy, we hit the print button, we're good to go. It's that easy. So Chris, appreciate all the help covering the difference between dots and lines. And it kind of leads me back into what we were talking about at the beginning of the video, which is cost calculation. How do you use the cost calculation feature and how do you plug that information into your RIP? It's actually quite simple. It's also a couple of clicks. There are two ways to do it. I'm going to show you both. So to set up our cost calculation, it doesn't matter on which screen we are. We can use the rasterization screen or we can use the, the first screen over here. We just use the calculation button over here. This button, as a reminder, just shows us calculations that we did before, so we can review them. Or we can set up a new calculation. So let's go to calculation settings and set up a new calculation. So what we have to do is go into new. We can here put in the price per sheet. We can give the calculation a name like Condis Calc. We, all our calculations are based on 8.511 sheets, so we type in here 8.511. And then we put in the coverage of the different toner drums. For the 8432, we have 10,000 prints on, on the cyan, magenta, and yellow, considering a 5% coverage. These values is something you can find at your OK brochure or your OK manual. So we can type this in all manually. 10,000 prints, 10,000 prints, 10,000 prints. And for the spot color for white, we have 4,500 prints. And here we can type in the price of the toner cartridge. Let's just work here with $100 which is not realistic, but just to feed it with some values. So in other words, these cost numbers are for demonstration purposes only. Exactly, exactly. And the white toner, which is a bit more expensive, just with $300, just for demonstration. We also can consider the life expectancy of our image drums. Again, we leave out black because we don't have any black cartridge in here. And just type in the numbers. So when we all set up, we hit save. Okay. And we do have now our candy calc over here. We can use that to calculate costs. As these numbers that we used here for demonstration are not correct, let me show you another way. Your candy sales rep has prices based on candy systems in Mobile, Alabama, and can duplicate this or even export it. So we can export the calculations. Let's call the export, save it, and import it, or you can import it, and everything is in there. So a client could enter these numbers manually if well, they had the information, or we could create the calculations that we can basically copy and send to someone that they can upload into their RIP and everything's ready. Absolutely. So let's just take a look at the imported file. So we now do have 
current costs. We do have the life expectancy of the image drums. We do have set in here also the expectancy of the fuser unit, the transfer belt, the waste bottle, everything that you have to replace sooner or later when you use that printer. So when we have to set up the calculations, we go and select the graphic that we want to calculate. Let's use, for example, the Capi skull that we are working with all day today. So let's do an example with an initial y channel coverage of about 280%. This is what we ha would have to use for an OK setup, an OK presenter printer driver, and use no micro mass. We just print as it is, screening from printer. So now we're getting the calculation of what it would cost if we were generating this print straight from the Yoki driver because the RIP is replicating it. Exactly. So we use our just created Condi import file, select it. Now it's calculating the print based on our settings that we have decided for and gives us a very exact calculation. So. A lot of times when people have called into Condi and they ask for how much does it cost to generate a print, usually we have to speak in generalities. Yeah. But with this cost calculator built into the RIP, it can tell them to the penny how much it's going to cost to generate that graphic? Not even to the penny, to a hundredth of a penny when you want to be that exact. So calculation is done. We can do it for one copy or for five or whatever we decide for. So what we can see over here is our paper cost. We didn't put any price in here. That's why it's showing $0. Mm -hmm. Our usage of the transfer belt, which is 0 0.0002 US dollars for each print, diffuser unit, waste bottle, and so on. Also, our usage of cyan, magenta, and yellow, 10, 8, and 9%. And of spot color, in this case white, 25%. As we can see, the costs for the regular toners, like cyan, magenta, and yellow, are in the areas of cents, like six cents here, five cents there, six cents again. But for white, because this is a very complicated color to produce and gives us a high value, we would have to pay 75 cents on an 11 to 17 print. Also the usage of our, of our image drums, so including toner and considering the life expectancy of our different parts in the printer, we have here 97 cents on printing costs for this specific printout without the rip. Without the RIP, if we had generated it using the Oki driver. Exactly. Now, let's say we employ the RIP where we reduce the white toner. Maybe we add a rasterization feature. Um, what would the, say, cost difference be? You know, because what this is going to take it, I guess, is that you're going to give us an illustrated example of how much that you could save on a real world graphic file by using the RIP. Yes, exactly. So. We can, if you like to, we can do two calculations. Yeah. One without the rasterization, just by reducing the amount of white, which we're doing right now over here. We just reduced the amount of white to 150% and choked off some white edges. So we're going to hit the calculation button. Again, the same calculation file, and let it calculate. Now, when it's doing its calculations, it's looking at all of those spot colors now. It's looking now at all five colors. Black, C, M, Y. It doesn't have black, but it theoretically looks after black as well. Mm -hmm. And knows that when you create have black in your artwork, that it will be generated out of C, M, Y. That's so right. It's using process black. Yes, which is a bit more expensive. That's why it makes much sense to use the mass for dark medium when we print on black fabrics, out of two reasons. One, we never hit the ex very exact black color of the fabric, and two, we don't need to print it because we can replace it by shirt color. So, again, we have 10, 8, and 9 percent on colors, but only 11 percent on white. All costs together, we have now 57 cents. So, we drop the cost dramatically by going from 280 percent white, which is what the Orki would normally lay down, and when we changed it to 150? Yes, 150. Just by going from 280 to 150, we're basically saving in the neighborhood of about around 40 cents a print. Yes, it's about 40% toner savings on an average. Okay, now let's employ a mask feature. Would it drop the price even more? Yes, let's say we're printing on a dark t-shirt, which is the normal case. 
with a line raster, 27%, a, qu a quite default shadow tolerance with 100, and do another calculation. Go on the import, and go. So basically, with this cost calculation feature, if I have the graphic, not only can I set up the graphic different ways in the RIP, I can see how much it's going to cost to generate that graphic before I quote my client on exactly. the Exactly. And what you also can do is you can save these files optically. So when this job comes back again, let's say your client was very happy with the shirt and wants now 20 of those again, wants to have a discount on it, you can calculate how big is your margin. What, and you can even see what set, what kind of a setup, what kind of a raster setup, what amount of white you have used to create this specific design. So in other words, if I've changed the saturation or the brightness and I've made a couple of other adjustments, when it gives me that cost calculation report, it's going to factor in those changes that I've made so I can duplicate it again. Yes. So now with the with the slight raster that we have built in, we have 7, 4, and 5% in colors because we have a slight raster in it. Still the same amount of, or almost the same amount of white. And just 40, we saved another 10 cents just by putting lines in it. It's softer now, better washable, breathable. So we got a better quality print for less. That's amazing. And when we want to reproduce this result, we can put the output button and save it on our desktop or wherever we, wherever we would like to have it. So I save it on my desktop so I have easy access to it. I'm going to say save. Save this one over here. So when I want to review my calculations, I can go in here, go to calculations, and open it again. So I know 57 cent was without rasterization, and the one above was with rasterization for 46 cents. When I go to my desktop and use the Capiscal con the PDF that I just created, I can see all steps from 5 to 3, like color management, up to the white channel control over the rasterization screen. I can easily reproduce this, that job when it comes back again. So now here we have our cost calculations. The next screen here would be the color management screen. In that case, we Increased brightness, we increased saturation, everything else was as it was before. Next page is the white channel fill up over here. We can see that we have used 150% of coverage and we use the reserve part uh, transparency function. When we go further down, we have a fourth screenshot that gives us exactly the mask, uh, the screening or the restoration setups, settings that we have used before. Screening for dark media, masks 27, dot shape lines, zero angle, highlights and shadows at 2 and 98. And we can reproduce this design whenever we like to. So with this feature, not only can we keep the graphics department happy, we can keep the accounting department happy because the graphics people know what changes we've made and the accounting people know exactly how much we paid for the print. Exactly. It's that easy. So Chris. I appreciate the time that you spent with us today going over all these features and functions that are available in the new updated Forever Transfer RIP. Now you out there in Condi TV land, after reviewing all these features and functions, we want to give you the opportunity to try this Forever Transfer RIP because we think it is a great useful tool. So if you contact your Condi Systems account manager, we can provide you an email with a link that will let you download and use a 14-day trial version of the RIP. Now, you can also get that trial version through Forever site, can't you? Yes, exactly, Doc. We created a web page to help you out. It's called whitetonertransfer.com. It's all about printing with the OK White Toner printers. We provide you FAQs, videos on how to apply the fabrics, how to apply the media, and even there's a free trial version of the Forever Transfer RIP. All you have to do is get the download and register your version online. So remember, you can get the free trial version of the Forever Transfer RIP through Condi, or you can get it from Forever Direct by going to www.whitetonertransfer.com. Now also understand, Chris, 
you have a little incentive for people watching this video who purchased the Forever Transfer Rip after playing with all these features and functions. What have you got for them? Yes, I appreciate it. It took all the time to watch this video. So what we got is a Forever White Toner Sample Package. So what you find in there is the laser dark low cut media instructions, the multi trans paper for hard surfaces, as well as brochures, the matte finish paper, everything you need to create transfers on garments as well on hard surfaces for the next five orders of the transfer rip. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you order the Forever Transfer Rip through Condi Systems and you reference this video, you might be a winner of a white toner sample pack free to you courtesy of Forever Paper. Chris, we really appreciate that. We know that everyone's going to be excited to get that offer. Now, since we have you here and we've got you on camera, I was hoping that you and I can cover a few more topics, mainly with rasterization in regard to FlexSoft. Now, you do have some tips and tricks on that, don't you? I sure have, Doc. Well, that's going to have to be another video, so I hope you guys tune in while we have Christopher here. So remember, tune in to our next series with rasterization using Forever FlexSoft. But until then, for Christopher Segman with Forever Paper, I'm Doug DeWitt, your T-shirt transfer paper product manager here at Condi Systems. Our time is up. We thank you for yours.